welcome back to my channel. I wanted to do a different video today that wasn't an unboxing. I do have figures and merch that I need to unbox and um, record a video for, but I'm gonna be honest, I'm not feeling unboxing <laughs> today. So I thought we would do a dust and discuss which is a video where i dust my figures and you can join me and we talk about i don't know random anime stuff so far it's been all about figures and anime merch and today we're doing the same thing maybe in the future i'll talk about other stuff about anime that isn't just mainly about collecting but for now that's what we're doing <laughs> i got a new desk so the angle in these videos are still weird but i think it's maybe better than before maybe not I, there's so much going on in the background not a great background sorry not a great angle lighting i record using my iphone and i've had an iphone 8 plus it's my first iphone ever and I've had it for I don't know how long and I still can't fucking figure out the lighting on this thing. So sorry if there's overexposure every, I don't know how long, oh no, I made that worse. Okay, oh, no, that's worse. Is that better? Who knows, I won't know until I start editing. But anyways, today we are going to be talking about things I hate about collecting anime merch so it's not just gonna be about anime figures it's gonna be about figures and like just regular anime merch in general now let me preface this by saying this is how i feel as of today i am typically someone unfortunately or maybe fortunately i don't know who tends to change their mind quite often so that might change in the future also i think even with the things that i mentioned that i don't like i feel like i can make exceptions for certain merch or certain figures so also please keep that in mind but feel free to go into the comment section below and either agree or disagree and tell me why you agree or disagree with these opinions or if i haven't mentioned something or brought up something in this list feel free to add on i would love to hear your thoughts so without further ado let's get started i have my laptop here clearly you can see with this terrible angle <laughs> you can see the corner of it uh, but i have my laptop here with the list so uh first up on the list has to do with figures surprise surprise and this is something that's pretty obvious i think everybody has an issue with and it's just storing figure boxes or just just storing unnecessarily large boxes like it is absolutely insane to me how like these companies justify making these huge plastic boxes for these tiny figures like I've seen 1 8 scale figures with like gigantic gigantic boxes for no reason there's like so much space around the figure i don't understand why and not only does that make it so annoying to store the box but the shipping cost is atrociously high like for no reason for no reason and let me tell you i can appreciate beautiful packaging I love package design so much, but like, I feel like you should be able to design a package without sacrificing the cost. Or if you had to sacrifice like the de design of the package just to make it more affordable to ship the figure, fine. I will take simplicity over the design. I, my main focus is getting the figure anyway and not worrying because the box is going to sit in the storage e either way, whether it's good packaging or not. I also want to say that <laughs> I'm, I'm moving on to the next point, but some of these are just petty little things that I that I'm going to complain about. So please don't take some of these like extremely seriously. You know, they're just petty stuff some of them so just keep that in mind um so speaking of petty the next one blister boxes now i understand they're very necessary in order to keep the figure safe during shipment or in storage or whatever uh but they are just annoying they're loud uh every time you try to break them apart and then like some of them are just such a pain to open that when you do open it, everything, like all the accessories inside, move around and get all over the place. And it's just, it's a mess. It makes a mess. It makes everything so overwhelming and confusing. And I just, 
I can live without it. So that was a little bit of a petty one, but still, still don't like it. So the next one is another pretty obvious one, and I hate unnecessarily large figure bases. Like all of these figures here have great size bases. They're fine, they're absolutely fine. I have a few though on my shelf that just take up so much space on the shelf for no reason. Like it's one thing if the base is like really artistic and has a lot of details going on and it's and it's kind of illustrating the setting the figure is supposed to take place in. But I mean, there are just figures that have like plain bases. Maybe just like a logo on it or like some kind of texture on it that like adds almost nothing to the figure. And it's just dumb, <laughs> it really is just dumb. And again, that I feel like that uses up more material for the figure and that adds to the cost of the figure in general. Why are we still doing that? I don't know. Also, it makes, it not only takes up a ton of space on the shelf, but it makes it really difficult to display other figures around it. It's just, I, I can, I can't, I cannot stand it. I cannot stand it. This next one isn't necessarily the fault of figure creators or figure companies, but really, I guess uh, the fault is in us or in me at least <laughs> for not being able to control my spending and how often I get new figures. Uh, so, it's on me this time, but I'm still upset about it. It's having to rearrange your shelf every time, maybe not like the whole entire shelf, but like maybe even an individual shelf every time you get a new figure in, or at least most of the time. Now initially this probably sounds fun since it'll feel like your space is constantly changing and you're not sitting in the same space all the time. However, it can get pretty frustrating pretty quickly especially when you have figures from like a million different series and they all have different aesthetics and you can't you can't seem to organize it in a way where everything looks organized or even like aesthetically makes sense and doesn't look like you just threw a bunch of shit on the shelf just to fill the space rearranging also means you need to constantly touch or handle your figures which in my case at least, everything I touch breaks. So there's a risk factor in that. I don't think they got life insurance for figures, you guys. So, and even if they did, I don't think I could afford it because I'm busy trying to afford the actual figure itself. <laughs> now, this brings me to my next point, which is what we're doing right now, dusting figures. I hate dusting these damn figures. Now, and I know you can probably get like a glass detolf shelf or whatever, but those glass shelves, first of all, you can't, <laughs> you can't trust me near fig touching figures, let alone near a whole glass display. Let me just put, put that out of the way. But like the glass figures are so, I just, I don't think they fit as many figures well, I know they don't. I know they don't fit as many figures as a regular like bookshelf would. And I know Ikea sells bookshelves uh, and then you can get like these glass doors for them. They're called like the Billy book cases. Uh, and then you can get like the glass doors for them. But you know what? I don't own the Billy bookcases. I own the cheap Target bookcases, okay? So how am I supposed to figure that out? <laughs> I'm not a construction worker. I don't know how to make custom frames for these damn things. Also, even if I were to find a door that would fit my Target bookcases, I feel like I would have a really hard time finding one with thin frames. Like I hate those thick frames on the doors. They just block so many of the figures. Like at that point, then I might as well have just bought a glass detail. But yeah, dusting. Another thing is when you're dusting these figures or some of these figures, especially Nendroids, if they're holding accessories, sometimes the figure doesn't hang on to the accessory hard enough or tight enough. So if you're if, if you brush against it just the tiniest bit, sometimes it will fall off of the figure and it's just so annoying to reassemble it and it's just, it's a hassle. It's so annoying. I hate it. I hate it. I like, I, I despise it. I used to dust my figures 
at least like once a month. <laughs> Y'all, it's been like six months. So uh, here we are, Dustin now. Now this brings me to my next point, Nendroids. I, it's not that I hate Nendroids. I love Nendroids so much. I think they're a fantastic and affordable way to buy figures and they're, they're adorable. They are absolutely adorable. And there are so many Nendroids that I want. So it's not that I, hate nendroids i just hate everything that comes with nendroids they break apart so easily it's just so annoying <laughs> but i feel like this is like a universal issue for people i guess i, I don't know let me know in the comments but nendroids hey i got a love hate relationship with them next up we have displaying figures at the bottom shelf this is just really annoying and i know there's nothing really you can do to solve this issue I guess but it's just hard to appreciate a figure when they're at the very bottom of the shelf and then it's also hard sometimes to decide which figure you're going to choose to display at the bottom shelf right now I have a bunch of plushies and like magical girl wands at the bottom shelf so I'm safe for now but when the time comes where I run out of space I am probably going to, or if I get like heavier figures, I am probably going to need to move them to the bottom of the shelf. And I don't know what I'm gonna do at that point. I can buy another shelf, but eventually I'm gonna run out of room on that one. So I'm always gonna land in the same situation. I could run, but I can't hide from this problem, basically. So there's that. And yeah, like I said, you could typically, typically you would put your least favorite figures at the bottom, but sometimes it just doesn't work like that. There are a lot of factors that go into it, like space, weight, aesthetic of the shelf and all that like eh, it's not always something you can avoid oh my god this is another one that i recently started getting kind of annoyed with not a lot because i haven't seen this issue pop up for were a lot of figures but some of them are just like ridiculous i don't like long pre-order times there is this, and I have an example of this. There is this one power figure from Chainsaw Man on Ami Ami. It's an Ami Ami exclusive item. I like it. There are some things that I don't like about it, but I, in general, I like it a lot more than some of the other power figures. The thing that's throwing me off is the release date. The release date is like in January, 2024. Now we're closer to that date now than we were when this figure got announced. I don't know when it got announced, but it got announced like months ago, months ago. And it's like, I love it. I'd love it. I'd love to pre-order it, but I don't know where I'm going to be January of 2024. I don't know what my financial situation is gonna be by then. And it's like, Ami, like it's one thing if you can, if you can cancel the pre-order, but Ami Ami has this rule where if you cancel too many stuff, they'll close your account and they don't really give you a number of how many cancellations like you can you can ask for or request before they shut down your account and whatnot so you're you're always like risking your account being shut down and losing the rest of your pre-orders that you already have that you really want so there's that and it's an AmiAmi Ami exclusive like I said but AmiAmi Ami isn't the only one obviously but some other websites too don't let you cancel figures at all. So these next few things are going to be stuff that I hate about figure collecting and um, collecting anime merch in general. So this goes for figures, acrylic stands, badges, posters, all that. The first one is not wanting to run out of space but also wanting your space to look full at the same time it's so conflicting <laughs> i don't know if you guys feel the same way or not but this is an issue i feel like i run in with all the time but like aside from that conflicting feeling it also feels good to know that you do have more space for other stuff but it's like, I guess it's just a matter of knowing how to organize your stuff around to make it look full, but also know you still have more space. I don't, I don't think I got that skill to be honest. Or like I'm constantly, I constantly get sick of how my space looks. So I'm constantly changing it. So I don't know, maybe that's the issue. Maybe I need to make up my damn mind. I don't know. And then kind of to tie into that, the next issue is finally running out of space. I, I feel like my biggest fear is actually running out of space. 
um, because things are constantly coming out. I'm always going to be watching new anime. It's like, I'm not there yet, but I'm still kind of, it's, it's still creeping up in the back of my mind that like, this is eventually going to happen. I am eventually going to run out of space. And I can sell some stuff, but I'm typically someone who can easily get attached to things. And I don't know, like, what do you do in that situation? You just have to force yourself, right? To sell that stuff. But yeah, there's that. Okay, so the next one is kind of a universal issue with figures and anime merch too. Aftermarket prices. This is no like, this is nothing new. This is not a new issue, but it is a huge one. And it is a very common one when it comes to collecting. Aftermarket prices, you guys. <laughs> in the past, I've mainly run into issues with aftermarket prices on figures because I was mostly like a figure collector and I've only like collected anime merch here and there. I think most of the anime merch I've collected was at like when I go to conventions or stuff like that. And then every now and then stuff online. Recently, I've been <laughs> buying more anime merch online and you guys, like I have seen small acrylic stands, like tiny acrylic stands or like cam badges go for like anywhere from $30 to $100. What is going on? <laughs> what is happening right now? There is no way, there is absolutely no way to justify something like that. I see that price and I close my laptop. We're done for the day. We are done shopping for the day. It's over. I'm snapping back to reality. Suddenly, I don't like anime anymore. Like I am, I'm actually offended when I see those prices. The next one is just lack of anime merch or figures from underrated series. So I have a list of a few series that I, that came to mind. Balance Unlimited. We have like one Nendroid of Combat and we don't have one of Haru, who's the main, like one of the main characters. He's pretty important if you ask me. Um, and that's about it. Uh, Skate the Infinity, Noragami, Toilet Bound Hanako-kun. We are getting a Nendroid doll if it hasn't released yet but the only other one is an Android, so it's basically the same merch, just a different variation of it. Great Pretender, you guys, I would kill for Great Pretender merch. Great Pretender figures, are you kidding me? Oh, not Nandroids. Okay, figures, scale figures. Oh my God. And then Yona of the Dawn, hello. Uh, and then I can't, yeah, I couldn't think of anything more at the top of my head. But yeah, those are just like a few of them. Next up, okay. <sighs> okay, this is just like, this This next one is so ridiculous that it's actually pretty laughable. You ever go on like a site to buy anime merch? And not figures, but like just regular anime merch. And they use a default image of the character that's from like the concept art or something like that, or the character design art, whatever whatever the hell it's called. Or they'll like take a screenshot from the series, but they'll take one image and they will copy and paste it onto every product form you can think of. They'll put it on an acrylic stand. They will put it on a poster, a postcard, a badge, an acrylic keychain. They will put it on your shoes, on your underwear. They will put it on everything like the same piece of art now let me say this because behind me i have this like dazai and chuya frame over here and it's from the fuji q bungo stray dogs event and i do have photo cards of that and i have acrylic stands of those i think those are super cute they're not defaulty they're from an event but i'm talking about like the ugliest the laziest like they will take screenshots from the series and just shit it on a product and, or like the concept art, like the ugliest, they will not come up with a new illustration, basically. You can be on like season five of an anime series and they will still be taking screenshots from season one too and putting it on merch. It's like, can we move on? Can we, can we get a little creative here? If I'm gonna be spending like $30 on a badge or something, can we at least make it worth $30 like I'm I'm confused why we're getting a little lazy here all right let's get a little creative okay um but yeah that is my list so 
uh, let me know in the comment section. I barely dusted. I'm so sorry. I hope you dusted because I barely did. I gotta stop recording and finish this up. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. And again, if you agree or disagree, or if I missed something and you'd like to add on to this list, please do so. Uh, let's all vent and rant all together collectively as anime fans or anime collectors in the comment section below. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one, which is hopefully, hopefully soon. Bye-bye, guys. Thank you.